Hey there, folks. My name is Dan Goodman, and I want to welcome you to Stormwind Studios' succinct held online remote training sessions, or as we like to call them, shorts. Now, why do we need to have an acronym shorts for something that could just be called a short? It's because it's IT. We need to have an acronym for everything. So this is the first short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts focusing on the background of Wi-Fi technology. As far as the main topics that we'll discuss here in this short, we'll cover what is Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi standards and governance, and some basic Wi-Fi terminology. You probably heard most of those terms before, but just in case you don't know, we're gonna make sure you know, you know? So beginning with what is Wi-Fi, Productivity is no longer measured by what happens nine to five, Monday through Friday. Work can be conducted anytime, any place on various devices and technology. Smartphones, tablets, laptops, video conferencing, telecommuting, whatever it may be. The increase in productivity is due in large part to the availability of Wi-Fi. Despite urban legend, Wi-Fi technically is not an acronym or short for anything else. Wi-Fi is a trademark term describing radio technologies based upon the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or IEEE, 802.11 standards. Now, the IEEE is a technical professional organization focused on educational and technical advancements of electrical and electronic engineering, telecommunications, computer engineering, and allied disciplines. The 802.11 standards are simply the designated family of standards specifying the protocols for implementing wireless local area networks. Others would be like 802.3 for Ethernet and 802.15 for wireless personal area networks and a half dozen so other ones that are out there. These standards essentially define the necessary elements to provide secure, reliable, and fast wireless connectivity among devices, the internet, and wired networks. The 802.11 standards specify two unlicensed radio bands for wireless networks. That's going to be the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band. There is equipment out there that is technically capable of operating within both radio bands and they are considered dual band devices. Now the US Federal Communications Commission or the FCC designates a radio band as unlicensed when the operator is not required to file for its use. So when we take a look at some of the standards and governance that are out there, various entities are responsible for the development, implementation, etc., of wireless networking. We mentioned one already, which is the IEEE. As mentioned, they, among other things, document te wireless technical standards. There are over 30 standards within the 802.11 family. There is a unique relationship with the IEEE 802.11 standards and other organizations. To use an analogy, if we were making a chocolate cake, the 802.11 standards would be the flour, the eggs, the milk, uh, the core ingredients, if you will. But Cisco may want to make a chocolate cake with an orange ganache, and Ubiquity wants to make a double chocolate cake. They're both chocolate cakes. They both contain the same core elements. They just have a little bit of different spin on that chocolate cake. Uh, there needs to be an entity out there that says, this is what we mean by chocolate cake. The IEEE has their definition, but vendors have their own interpretation. Insert the Wi-Fi Alliance. The Wi-Fi Alliance is a nonprofit organization that certifies Wi-Fi products for conformity to certain standards of interoperability. They do other things as well, but they specifically go out to say, this standard means this plus this plus this. That's how you arrive at that standard. They identify exactly how to implement an 802.11 standard and certify products as such based upon the frequency band, the maximum possible bandwidth, the modulation and coding scheme, otherwise known as the MCS, which basically describes how digital data is converted to analog for transmission over radio frequencies. Now we're gonna dive deeper into those protocols that we have listed behind me here in the next short, but for now you can kind of get a sense of what they are and kind of their high level details. The next uh, regulatory entity, if you will, would be the International Telecommunications Union, the ITU. 
This is a United Nations specialized agency for information and communication technologies. They facilitate international connectivity in communication networks. Specifically, the ITU radio communication sector, or the ITUR, focuses on globally managing the radio frequency spectrum and satellite orbits. We also have the Federal Communications Commission and the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, the FCC and the ETSI, respectively. These are regulatory entities for the United States, with the FCC, and the European Union, with ETSI. They control radio frequency bands, transmissions, modulations, and frequency usage within their regulatory domains. The FCC, for example, is going to define rules for wireless spectrums, wireless channels, antenna gain and power levels, modulation and encoding techniques. The regulatory domains are used to identify the appropriate configurations based upon geographic location. For example, we might have an access point out there that satisfies the requirements of the United States, but not the European Union. We want to ensure that the equipment we use satisfies our own regulatory domain requirements. One of the last things we're going to get into in this short is going to be some basic Wi-Fi terms. The last item on our to-do list is to simply point out a lot of these terms that we're going to see over the next few shorts. We want to make sure we spell out the acronyms to avoid any sort of confusion whatsoever. There are tons and tons of acronyms and even acronyms that contain acronyms within the Wi-Fi realm. But the most important ones are going to be the access point or the AP. This is simply a networking device interfacing between wireless enabled devices and the rest of the network infrastructure. Local area network or LAN, identifying a managed computer network containing devices in a limited geographical area. Similarly, we have a wireless local area network or a WLAN. This is a LAN specifically designed for wireless devices. And then we have a wide area network or a WAN, which is essentially a network of networks located in more than one geographical area. So as the name implies, we keep these relatively short and sweet, hence the acronym SHORT. Thanks for watching our short on wireless LAN essentials. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you're notified of new shorts in the future. Talk to you soon. Take care.